Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We are less than 24 hours away from getting on FIFA 23 Ultimate Team for the first time, especially if you have pre-ordered the game via Ultimate Edition with the 4,600 FIFA points and all of those perks, or if you're getting the 10 hours of EA Play Early Access. There is a lot that's about to change on this market. The next 24 to 48 hours on the market in FIFA 23 are going to be absolutely mental. And I want to try to break it down for you guys today and try to specifically answer the question, when should you buy players for your team? Depending on if your team is going to include some cards like cheap players, like a Chalmany, maybe an Araujo or a Goncalo Guedes, or is your team going to contain some higher tier, more expensive players like Ronaldo, Vinny Jr., maybe a Messi, maybe an icon or a foot hero with that higher budget, what can you expect to see for those cards? Now, we've been talking about the market a lot in the past couple of days, and of course, everybody is still expecting a lot of prices on this market to rise, but I want to break down that theory today and especially just talk through the why we think that's going to happen and also how a lot of cards are still going to go down in value in the next couple of days and kind of trying to point you away from those or just mention, hey, a time frame of buying a team on certain levels might not be today or tomorrow. It might be a couple days down the road. If you wait two or three days, you might save yourself hundreds of thousands of coins, depending on the cards that you go ahead and buy. So we're going to talk about all that more in today's video. If you're excited for it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. And let's just also recognize that this is basically the end of the web app period, which I think we can all be very thankful for. The web app this year, it's been a very different and it's never it's never been like this ever before. Really, it hasn't. We've never had a time frame where we've had the web app period for five or six days with nothing to do but SBCs and try to make coins. We all know that it's been an absolute grind to try to make coins on this game so far. But that is all changing because the web app period is going away. We finally have the real game to play um, after today. So let's talk market and let's talk prices and why this whole web app period makes a completely different market than ever before. Let's talk some theory, right? So the reason why everybody believes that market prices are still, you know, really, really cheap when you look at some of these players and what they have gone for in previous years. And, you know, even with the new, very supplied and very cheap market, you think about last year in FIFA 22, the market was cheaper than ever. It's looking like it's going to be the same this year in FIFA 23, very comparable, uh, comparable to last year. I'm going to show you two cards from last year at the beginning of FIFA 22 and just again show you how the market is so different this year than it was last year. 85 rated Marcus Rashford. Last year at the beginning of the year, we had tradable advanced SBCs and we had the EA Play 10 hour early access where people were able to play the game. They were able to get coins from those advanced SBCs. And of course, I think they were able to open FIFA points as well, if I do remember correctly. And you had gameplay demand from the get-go. So an 85 rated Marcus Rashford last year was 160K in the first couple of days, went down to 148. And then with the Ultimate Edition release, which is what happened right here on the 27th last year as well, he exploded in price as people opened their FIFA points, got coins, went out and bought teams. Now, the way that's completely different this year is there was zero gameplay demand, right? As we were talking about, it's all been web app. So player prices have started very, very low and they just continue to rise, but the market is still in very early stages and there's not a lot of supply and there's so few people still on this game. Think about all the people that are going to be getting on the game in the next 24 hours that want to go build and buy a team or maybe all the people that have been on the game already, like myself, who have coins and who will want to have some sort of team to go out and play the actual game of FIFA, right? There's going to be so much demand that we have not seen in the past five days come on to this game and onto this market very, very soon. And that's the main reason why we are looking at a lot of these players on the game, especially your top tier meta cards and expecting a rise because there's so many people that have to build teams. And that's why answering the question of when to buy your team is going to be very crucial. And especially it's going to be a, a card by card basis when you break it down, especially if we try to break it into these tiers between like the high tier, the middle and the lower tier cards. I mean, all these cards are going to be moving differently here in the next couple of days. So let's start talking about it. Now, just like last year, since we are coming into a point where a lot of coins are going to be added to the market, as people open these packs, they are going to be getting coins and supplying the market with a lot more cards. So in theory, you want to be buying the cards that people really want to be upgrading to with their teams with more coins. The higher tier cards, which is what I want to start by talking off first, 
I really like the higher tier cards. Still think that so many of them, even though they've gone up in price from where they were, like in Cuckoo, as we just looked at, yes, he was actually 47,000 coins. Now he is 74K. I still maintain my early on price estimates of this card somewhere definitely over 100,000 coins, around 150 to 200K, I believe is where I put a price range on this guy. I might have said 200. I still think that a lot of these cards. I mean, again, we can't underestimate how much demand. Think about all the casuals. Think about all the people that haven't even touched the web app yet. They're going to be starting their ultimate teams basically in the next 24 hours because they pre-order the ultimate edition and especially in the next few days in general, getting on the game, buying disc copies and stuff like that. You know, there is so much demand to be had here, especially on the higher tier cards. And when people open their FIFA points, let's say like we have calculated in the past, you open your 4,600 FIFA points, you're making an easy 50K. That's almost taking you to this Nkunku card at 74,000 coins or 50,000 coins on this game right now can buy you two Antonys. It can buy you uh, multiple uh, Gabriel Jesus. You could buy Usman Dembele for 50K, right? That's really crazy that Usman Dembele is only 50,000 coins or you know a card like Marquinhos is only 45,000 coins where last year he was over 150,000 coins on on the market and on the game so a lot of these high tier cards since we have had no gameplay demand are absolutely still going to go up and if you're wanting to buy cards for your team that are from this higher tier especially if that is including a team of the week one card like Immobile you know even a Hyunmin Sun who is up so much in price 370k He's up a lot right now. I do think that some of these top tier cards will drop down a little bit. Let me show you an example of what's been happening about every single day. Let's use, hmm, let's use Vinny Jr. for example, right? Very popular card. I think this guy is probably going to end up going 300,000 coins plus uh, in the next two days. Take a look at his graph. Every single day, cards get really rare at nighttime, especially if they're, they're the top tier, more expensive cards. Vinny yesterday on Sunday was 217 in the morning dropped down to 186,000 coins uh, after that, right? So your early morning hours, and I believe this time is sorted by the UK time. Uh, so it's like 8 a.m. UK time. He was 186K dropping down from where he was in the very rare parts of the night. And then he starts to rise back up throughout the rest of the day. If there's no content today on Monday, he's probably gonna have a very similar graph. You take a look at Saturday, same thing. Kind of spiked at night, went back down in the morning and then kind of went back up. I would expect the same thing. I know there's a lot of people right now with big budgets that are on the game that are trying to invest and build teams and they're expecting a market rise. And I do, I think that's gonna happen. It's almost inevitable that a lot of your cards on this game are going to be rising. Again, like the informs and like the foot hero cards. Yes, they are up a lot. Like Hyunmin Sun was 211,000 coins and right now he is 370. He was two, 220 just two days ago, right? So, you know, you have to be careful with some of the buy prices on these cards, but a lot of them are still going to go up because of rarity and because of so many coins coming onto the market. So, high tier cards like the Ronaldo, like the Messi, like the Mbappe, the Nkunku, the higher rated cards that have less supply that are very highly demanded as well, those are going to be the ones that are going to start going up in the next couple of days just because people are going to be putting them in their teams and trying to invest in them, knowing that the market is going to be headed upwards as well. That's where I think a lot of the higher tier side of the market is going to be going. Now, on the other end of things, let's take a look at this Rashford card again and show you how the market is going to continue to trend. Let's say you go ahead and you buy somebody for your team today before the market starts to rise. Let's say you buy mm, Rudiger, 70,000 coins. Yes, he was once 50K. Now he's 70K. This guy probably is going 100,000 coins or higher. What's his price going to do over the next couple of weeks? Well, for a lot of these cards and what we saw for the first time more than ever last year in FIFA 22 is that cards did not hold their value very well at all at all, right? We had so many more promos. We had so much more pack supply. Rashford last year peaked a couple of days before the Friday release of Once to Watch. Last year it was Friday, October 1st. He went from 170 down to 150 and then he just kept dropping. And by a month later, he is 70,000 coins and you're losing a lot of your coins on that one card. So the same general rule applies with FIFA cards this year and FIFA 23 as well. Don't hold on to cards for that long because you will run the risk of losing coins on them very, very quickly. 
This Ronaldo card, by the way, I think there's a lot of people that are going out and trying to invest before people open their FIFA points because this Ronaldo card in the late night has gone from 160K at his minimum price. He has gone all the way up to 286,000 coins, 215,000 coins. I'm searching at 286. So he's gotten very rare and he has exploded in price right there. So again, that's kind of the way of the market. We think that it's going to go up a lot in the higher tier end because there's so much gameplay demand and so many coins that are going to come on the market. A lot of cards like heroes and icons that aren't stupid overpriced already, of course, but like this is Valverde, definitely going over 100,000 coins in my opinion. You have cards like Vinny, Benzema, Dybala, Joao Cancelo. I mean, I could go down this list and just name you so many cards that are going to go up in price. Now, again, they will lose their value over time, but for the short term, they are good buys and they should be going up in price very soon. Now, also, I want to talk to you about some of these players that are going to be going down in price and they're going to be going down in price a lot. I want to show you Alan St. Maximin from last year. This is a mid-tier card, right? This is a card that a lot of people want to buy for their teams. A lot of people maybe have already bought for their teams and it's kind of like a starter squad type of player, but it's also low rated. Last year, big spike. I expect a spike on these middle tier, even if they're lower rated. Guys like Lacroix, guys like Alan St. Maximin, guys that are in that lower, let's say like below 84 rated that are going for a decent amount of coins. Even a guy like a Klosterman or a Diogo Jota, he's 85 rated, but you know, Klosterman, I do expect to probably have a bit of a bump in price just because there's so much demand for his card as a starter card in the early game stages. Ferland Mendy, again, very meta, very overpowered. That's almost a high tier card. Uh, for sure, that's a high tier card. A guy like Zakaria, a guy like Rafael Leal, a guy like Anthony, these are lower tier cards that are going to get packed a lot and they're even invested in a decent amount right now. But think about how many people are going to want to build their teams around those cards in the next two or three days. I still think that for guys like Renato Sanchez, as well as the guys that we just talked about, there will be price movements upwards in the next two to three days but those prices will not last for long. They are going to drop off very fast because the supply is just going to keep coming in, especially for a guy like Alan St. Maximin, who, yes, is very good, but think about it. After you use Alan St. Maximin for a couple days, you get more rewards, you get more coins, you open more packs, you're going to have more coins to upgrade an attacker in your team. Who are you going to want to upgrade to? Maybe a guy like Luis Diaz. Maybe you're going to want to upgrade to somebody like Vinny Jr. in the next couple of days and swap your team around, you know, or, or a Neymar for a left wing if you really start to get a lot of coins. And that is what you're going to see happen in the, in, honestly, like the two to three days after this, you know, Tuesday to Wednesday, crazy market time frame kind of happens is that supply is going to start to take over. So if it's a when to buy sort of question that's being asked for some lower tier cards that are on this market, you know, I would really, really say if you can hold off and maybe you just play with a really terrible starter team with like non-rare golds or untradeables that are in your club, the longer that you can stay away from cards like this Lacroix, the longer that you can stay away from a guy, even like Renato Sanchez, even like Alan St. Maximin, uh, but specifically these types of guys or, you know, like a St. Juste, a lot of people want to get him in their team. You know, he's like three, 4,000 coins. Maybe it's like uh, Pierre Kalulu, the French center back. The longer that you can stay away from these sorts of guys and not spend coins on them in the next two, three, four days, the better. Because again, like we saw with the St. Maximin graph, these prices just absolutely die off with all the packs that are going to be open in the next week. People will upgrade from them very fast and these guys will be left in the dust before you know it. So if you're wanting to buy a team that's on a cheaper tier of players, I would say that look more towards maybe the weekend um, or look towards just, you know, one thing I would tell you guys to do as well is like, let's say you really want to buy Lacroix for your team, right? I know Lacroix is what, seven, 8,000 coins right now, 7,500-ish on the market. This guy could really drop down to like, 3,000 coins in the next two to three days. If you're like Nate, I don't care about losing 3,000 coins. If he goes from 3K to 1,000 coins like two weeks after that, then that's completely fine, right? Just know, set yourself a buy price. That's what I would kind of encourage you guys to do. Like Qua right now is 7K. Could he go up to 10,000 coins? Um, you know, in a really quick moment of hype and people building their teams like today on Monday, maybe tomorrow on Tuesday for a tiny bit. Yeah, there's absolutely that potential. But as the supply continues to come in, as people get more coins, by the time we get to Friday, a card like this 
is going to be in the mud. So that's what I would tell you is just kind of you have to weigh the 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 risk on a card like this. You really have to weigh the risk knowing that people will want him right away, but also knowing that the longer you hold him, the more risk that you are incurring because he is absolutely going to drop off in price. So that's kind of the whole premise of what we're talking about right now. And, and that's how this whole game is going to be going over the next 24 to 48 hours is so many people are going to be buying teams and there is going to be demand. Some of these lower tier guys that I'm mentioning, like Klosterman, like LaCroix, I mean, these guys could have some upward price trends for a short amount of time. But again, I would not hold on to them for long and I would not be putting too many coins in those. Now, the other thing I have to say is too, and this, this is kind of going back to the higher tier and the investing side of things. If you're wanting to buy cards for your team that are also investments, make sure you're just buying higher rated ones that have good links that people will want to upgrade into in their teams, right? Think about it. A guy like Rafael Varane last year, notice a difference here between, you know, the, the graphs that we looked at for like Allen St. Maximin and Rashford, you know, St. Max goes from 28K to 9,000 coins in two weeks. Rafael Varane goes from 320K. Oh, he's still 320K a month later or 300,000 coins a month later because he is like the best Prem center back in the game, right? You know, of course his card's a little bit worse this year, so it may not be the case, but I mean, if you think about the cards that you're buying and that you're trying to invest in, those you can probably hold for a little bit longer. Although there is a lot of people investing in cards like Ronaldo, like, you know, the Nkunku. I know so many people that have invested in, in cards like those, Militao, and I still feel like there are cards that are undervalued. But you, you do have to kind of take that into consideration that some of these cards may have a good amount of people already invested in them. And if they do decide to sell these cards too soon or before we get to like, you know, a couple weeks down the road, which I do think a lot of people are gonna see the price rises on cards like Militao, Messi, and Ronaldo, and maybe a Benzema or a Mendy or an Nkunku or a, a Usman Dembele, any of these higher tier meta cards people have invested in, I do think you will start to see people sell these cards off Thursday heading into Friday because they will be fearful of the of the FIFA points that will be opened, of course, on ones to watch promo Friday coming on this Friday, the 30th of September. And I think that you will see a few prices dropping on the higher tier cards then. So again, maybe if it's somebody that's lower rated like a Rafael Leao or maybe an Usman Dembele or a Rafinha, you're being a little bit careful with those cards on the higher tier if you're making an investment. Um, but I, I think that you're still going to be pretty safe over the next week or two, just because again, the cards that you want to be buying for your team and investing in to make coins in that way will be cards people are going to upgrade to and then put some coins into them because they're getting more coins and building their teams out that way. So that's the best I think that I can do at trying to explain and try to break down the whole market right now. Again, I know that it seems like a lot of people have invested and it feels like everybody is saying the market's going to go up, buy, buy, buy. But I mean, think about it realistically, it has to go that way because there are so many people that are not on the game yet. There's been no gameplay or team building demand and there's just not that much supply on the market yet for a lot of cards. And really the only way is up at least for the next couple of days. Now we'll break it down every single day and watch how the market is moving and stuff. And there's going to be some fluctuations here and there. Like I was saying, I feel like there's a lot of of players right now that are looking to invest. Ronaldo was, you know, not even on the market for the last three days, or he, sorry, he was on the market, uh, but his price was like stuck at 160,000 coins. And now he seems to be going up in price. Um, I think I think people are just kind of flipping that switch and they're starting to buy cards. So if you're trying to buy a really high tier card, watch for fluctuations today in the morning on Wednesday, because even a guy like Benzema, whose price range is messed up, he's like going extinct at 32,000 coins uh, because I think people realize that, hey, if I want to buy a Benzema for my team, um, you know, I got to go out and do it. And he's, his price range is now, you know, being needs to be upgraded. We need, we need some price range downgrades as well. Like guys like uh, Varane, nobody can buy him right now in this market because he's 100K and that's his minimum. So we need some price range fixes um, and we need some more content from EA Sports. That'd be very nice as well. But 
I do think that today is going to be the beginning of that madness of that spree. There's going to be a lot of supply and a lot of packs open, but there's also going to be a lot of cards going up. So it's a really big day for the market. And hopefully this video helped you out with maybe deciding on when and where, especially if you plan out your starter team, how many coins you should be spending um, and when you should be spending some of those coins on your starter team. So if it did help you at all today, make sure to thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions. And of course, subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate, the foot account, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.